Good morning, my fellow scientists. It is Wednesday, May 17th, 2017. I want to talk to you about a paper by Tucker et al. out of UC Berkeley and Lawrence Berkeley National Labs. They worked on an all-iron battery that is disposable, where the notion is you could assemble some iron salt, some table salt, a bit of paper, and a bit of steel, and make yourself a voltaic cell that would provide enough energy to, say, charge a foam. But once it was done, the whole thing could be incinerated or recycled as scrap iron, making it a single-use but environmentally friendly battery system. My efforts have been devoted to making such a system also rechargeable, but as a first step toward the design of a rechargeable all-iron battery, this is kind of an interesting step to study. So let's look at that in a little more detail. So how did they design their battery? They took a carbon felt on one side, a paper separator, and over here they have a big chunk of steel, or iron, mostly. And they connect up their load between the two. Inside this carbon felt, they've put some just solvated iron salt. So abbreviate as iron 3 plus and SO4 ions floating around. And they have some supporting electrolyte as well. Now what happens when you allow electrons to flow you have iron becoming iron 2 plus and liberating electrons which come over here and take iron 3 plus to iron 2 plus. So the net reaction is the production of iron 2 plus. Here's where it gets interesting. You can have some of these iron 2 plus on this side diffuse over or you can have some of the iron 3 plus on this side diffuse over, react directly with the iron metal, absorb an electron from it, and become iron 2 plus. Both of those net reaction product is iron 2 plus, the product of the reaction we want. Result being that any migration of iron across this membrane discharges the battery. The good news is it doesn't contaminate the battery. You could always regenerate iron 3 plus over here and iron metal over here by running the reaction backwards but the fact that iron can diffuse across this system is a problem so the self discharge rate of this battery is definitely a limiting factor but it's essentially the same chemistry as I would like to run in my system and then look at how it how it actually performs so if you find this kind of thing interesting, tune in tomorrow and every Monday through Friday, except for next week when I'm off for vacation, where we'll talk about chemistry, batteries, and DIY science projects here in the Allen.